The 80s saw a revolution in drum corps. Boots gave way to ballet, and the Blue Devils juggernaut rolled through its second decade. Mike Moxley's flowing drill designs helped the Corps win five of their 12 championships. He became the Corps' first full-time director. Stephanie Lind, or Stacy to some, brought style and sophistication to the Blue Devils, making obsolete the term color guard. Simply put, Wayne Downey is the most successful arranger and instructor in DCI history, winning 19 championship brass titles. Scott Johnson has 11 DCI championships and 10 high percussion awards to his credit. He has been the Blue Devils Director of Percussion since 1994. So the 80s began uh, with the Blue Devils really as the dominant force in drum corps. We had won three championships by then, ready to win a fourth. And uh, it was really the culminating year for the Bl Blue Devils' uh, sort of first foray into drum corps. Right. We'd only been around for a short time at we, that point. We were the target. We had that big target right in the center of us, <laughs> and everybody right. wanted to right. do in the Blue uh, Devils. And other drum corps had been denied the championship over and over again by either the Blue Devils or by the Santa Clara Vanguard at right. that period. Because right. 27th, uh, 27th had an opportunity. Phantom Regiment. Phantom Regiment, right. the, the perennial right. bridesmaids. Right. Right. So, right. So, uh, so the 80s really began for the Blue Devils as completing sort of the fantasy of a bunch of young kids getting together and running a drum corps uh, from the 70s sure. that by then we were the ones to beat and it was exciting. We the entire feeling drum our staff, oats by then. The entire drum staff in the 80s were all 22 years old. Oh, we okay. all aged out from 79. That's, that's right. right. And we replaced the whole drum staff. You know, that's all a of us important were, transition point. We were young. We started to pull <laughs> we were kids young. that yeah. had been in the corps right. for the first time. Right. Uh, onto the staff for the first time, including Stephanie, Dave right. Gibbs, right. Scott, Scott, and you Terry. Guys, you guys had barely gotten out of Santa Clara. Well, see, that's I mean, we kind of carried on the tradition, really, mm. because really right. what happens when we uh, aged out of Santa Clara in 1972. Um, <laughs> <72. laughs> <laughs> what? Really, what? the Blue Devil staff, the Blue Devil staff in seventy in the early seventies, mm. really was all Santa Clara, with the exception of the the Strattons mm -hmm. and the Odellos. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. And but just think, Ron Menke, right? Mike right. Moxley, right? Wayne, Wayne Downey. Downey. You know, there was just a whole. Uh, mm -hmm. So, what was great about the seventies coming to an end and moving into the eighties was we were able now to see our, the fruition of our students and our hard work with our mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. come to be mm -hmm. uh, with the beginning of 19, right. you know, 1980, which was great. And the other thing is that remember 1980 was the culmination of the persona of jazz with the Blue Devils. All of the, the idiom that we developed and that style and that, you know, just really came to be in 1980. It was the exclamation point of exactly. the jazz style with, you know, New York fantasy mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, all those great La Suerte de los Tontos, right. Gingy. Exactly. You know, it was the personification of the Blue Devils mm -hmm. jazz. Exactly. So in peaking at that point, it was time to then, you know, move on to a, a different era, even though we weren't really thinking that, I don't think. I think we were just, gosh, where do we go from there? How do we make it better? Right. Right? And um, I came on the staff in 1981, and taking off from where Shirley started with um, these, you know, really wonderful fun pieces of equipment, the streamers, you know, the hoop de doos uh, um, uh, the movement that she incorporated into the, the, um, the color guard. Um, I came in in 81 with, after having a background in dance and took off with streamlining the streamers, changing the uniform, not only me, but the whole staff. The boots went the away, uniform. right? The boots went away. The rifles <laughs> eventually, <laughs> the rifles eventually went away. We got into, you know, the, what everybody, you know, likes to call the airline stewardess you know? <laughs> right. What do you like to call it? No, the sleek, that sleek, streamlined, you know, um, unitard with the sequins and the nice hat. And, and the girls just started looking like feminine. almost the color guard started looking right. feminine. Right. And, and that modern dance movement fit right into that. And then we took off with, with better music, better drum, drum accompaniment to the music, better design, and a better, a, a more integrated, complete integrated uh, drum corps package, and then in 82, the wings. The wings were just phenomenal, right. and we a, didn't know. That was a big trademark move. Yeah, yeah, it was a big transition, and we started with eight, and then through the 80s went to, at one point, 32 wings on the field. <laughs> Once, 32, three different colors with 
you know, with, that, with Carnival 9 or whatever that was. That, well, you just said a major word, a very important word, colors. Because colors, remember, yes. remember up and through the 70s, it was silver, black, blue, right. uh, white. Right. You know, that we Color never, on small flags, uh, small, but no, smaller no, flags, no large no pieces large of fabric, fabric, equipment. No purples. Yes. You know, remember, because it was really the advent of bringing color to the right. field. You know, that's right, you know, because drum corps up to that point, I think, were still of the mindset of sort of more from the military origins exactly. of the activity, exactly. right? Sure. So, so you would, your colors were literally your colors. Right. So your flags were representative <laughs> of only the colors of the uniform and something that somebody would typically identify with mm -hmm. that particular right. drum corps. Right. And the departure that, that we took, we probably uh, did more for the advancement of... Uh, specialty fabric stores in San Francisco <laughs> than any other single <laughs> yeah. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Visually, things started to change because of the personalities of the staff and the introduction of new people into the staff Absolutely. that have different backgrounds. Yeah. Right. You know, really, you That's have to, point. that Mike and I had designed through the 70s. So really, when we first started designing, it was just really trying to do what we knew better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we kind of kind of took what our basis and our background with Santa Clara, right. and you know your background with Pete and mm -hmm. and so right. forth, and we try right. to do that as yeah. you know as best we could, and then try to be inventive with it. But it got to be around the '80s where we going, there's got to be you know something else to this. Right. Well, you know, you know, really the tradition of the Blue Devils really came out of the Kingsmen. You sure. know, it was really That's a sure. natural extension sure. out of the Kingsmen, right? right? And the choice then was really to follow these, you know, if you follow it back, you mm -hmm. know, the Kingsman actually, you go back to that sort of the heartland, you know, sort of stuff of, uh, right. of sort of a, the tough guy drum corps stuff. Sure. It was the Royal Airs, it was the Cavaliers, it was the Boston Crusaders, it was that kind of feel. Right, don't break to ranks. It. <laughs> it was not, it was definitely not, and this is what Wayne and I were probably most resistant to, was we were not going to make another Santa Clara. Right. Well, we, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I mean, that was really not what that was about. We didn't want to build another one of those. We wanted to build something quite different. Mm -hmm. And it was, but Wayne's right about the change in the 80s really meant also that uh, we had this new fabric of people. Some of them came from within the drum corps for the first time. Mm -hmm. Scott comes on to the on to the Well, uh, all of our staff. young students had, had exactly. matured to Dave the point Gibbs that they were starting to share. Dave Gibbs for the first time. Mm -hmm. Stephanie right. comes on. Uh, really big, but the other big deal, from my point of view, were some guys that came from the East Coast, and uh, you know I can remember always. You know, my, one of my most vivid recollections is hiring a rifle instructor. Remember this stuff? Right. From we were Boston. trying to figure out that was eighty three. Eighty three? What year was that? No, no, no. This is eighty one or two uh, well, that Jay I, shows up. Jay, Jay Murphy, Murphy. Yeah, shows yeah, up, yeah, yeah. and he's going to be the rifle instructor. Sure. And the other guy that shows up is this wonderful friend, Tony Smith. Right. And right. Tony was sort of the Mel Stratton <laughs> replacement for me. You know, right. Mel and I, uh, you know, much to some people's surprise, like each other. We became great <laughs> friends, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. We became great friends. And you know, right. Mel was, you know, GEM and M instructor, you know, right, and I was exactly. supposed to come in and just, uh, you know, sort of clean everything up. Right. And it never worked yeah. that way. We G designed the show from the beginning. <laughs> But what, what was really fun about the 80s to me was, that, was Tony coming in. Because mm -hmm. Tony was the one that allowed us to have courage, really. Sure, I he think, just brought, yeah, to make some to of the changes yeah. that he we made. He was a snare drummer, wasn't he, with Boston? Yeah, he was a snare drummer. He was, he was a, a drummer back then. Right. Right. He was the designer. We loved him. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Tony's Absolutely. the one that helped with the, the, the actual final design of, of the, the uniform, uniform in yeah. 1981. Yeah, right. it was huge. It was a very important part of it. And I think moving on, you know, moving on, you know, in 81, we made that incredible change in the color guard personality. But musically, we try to make some changes, too. Mm. That's major changes. Major changes feature. with the percussion feature. Absolutely. Realize yeah. back in the old days that we should did an, you know, an opener, you did a color pre, mm -hmm. right. you did a concert, you right. did a production number, and you did an exit. And but those we, were exactly, yeah. and they actually used to be on the sheet, you right. know. And then as we got to the 76, 77, that started to change the complexity of the judging system. And it was more, you know, individual productions of your own liking. One mm -hmm. didn't need to be patriotic. One didn't need to be a love song. Mm -hmm. One didn't, you know what I'm saying? And you didn't have to have a break between each one. You right. didn't have to stand ex still to ex do that. Yeah. You didn't have to stand still to do concert. Right. So like right continue. around 81, we started to try to break the mold of what we were. And that was kind of daring for us after being so successful for a while. And the first year, from a musical point of view, we actually didn't succeed. You know, we no, did right. well. We that's didn't exactly succeed. Right. You know. no, you're, you're talking it, about 81? 81. Yeah, 81. Yeah, 81. In 82, the reason that, well, besides being just a remarkable group of kids, and that was right. a really yeah. talented oh, group of kids, exactly. wow. is, yeah. is the real difference was we put on the other glove. I mean, Tom Float Tom shows up. Right, Absolutely. Tom Float shows up. Tom was huge. Time. Scott, I mean, this was, this was a tie when you guys, I think, turned a huge corner. Because Tom was already 
remarkably successful right, right. without really having a championship right. drum corps to work from with. Spirit of Atlanta and then a Tobacco Crusade It was, it was taking the yeah. heart and soul of what Terry Sherberg and, and Scott were all about and then adding that razor sharp technical prowess. <laughs> It was so mathematical with you know, Tom yeah. that it, it wasn't going to make a mistake. Yeah. It was impossible to make a mistake. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and also, right around 82, it started to occur. People started to think that maybe we needed to have different instruments in the brass section, too. Of course, that was from the we've point... We've been trying to work on that for, for 10 years exactly, already. <laughs> exactly. But this is, you know, 82 was right around the point. And I, you know, I'm going to have be off by a year or two, because I, I, I can't remember but exact dates. But I remember around 82 or 83, Jack and I started, you know, dip kind of kibitzing around with different ideas for, you know, bugles, because we figured it was time to yeah. have a real instrument or a better instrument, mm -hmm. you know. And 82 things started to come into, you know, perspective for all of us musically, and the 82 call was fabulous. But that's when we started to do productions that were longer, that just mm -hmm. weren't a minute and yeah. a half, or just two yeah. minutes. That's right. Okay. Right, I and remember. Then, yeah. Right, and then, like, for example, branching out to the, into Gene Perling, where we were taking music that was a cappella that had no instruments at all written for, just all vocals <laughs> 82 is you know really really a pivotal year from a creative point of view yeah, you know, no, first. And then if true. we move on to 83, then, of course, the cadets of Bergen County come onto the scene oh, yeah. and completely Thanks. change the entire face of drum corps. <laughs> I think it changed us too. Oh, it definitely. Because oh, I think we, we, we didn't really, really have anybody. We went into to a compete. period of real searching. They took all the rules and threw them completely yeah. out. Mm -hmm. There were no concerts. And by the way, they you didn't play stop, last and they added they added the, the extra element of extra extra speed. Well, <laughs> right. but, wow. the, but there was a sense of pro program and a, and, a, and a thread through everything that mm -hmm. made sense. Mm -hmm. that so right, identity, they had a theme. They had a theme like West Side Story, thread, and they started to put, continuity. put on a show. I think they threw out that maybe the last thread of what the um, you know, that the military aspect of drum corps, and they made it into a musical arts activity. More it was more avant-garde. But you know, you also had George Zengali, who changed the complete face oh of the gosh. visual visual world. I mean, because yeah. for 1976 until 1982, Mike and Mel Stratton were the premier mm -hmm. drill writers. There was setting, a guy named Pete. Oh, Pete Emmons. Oh, right. yeah. Let's not forget Pete. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that you learn oh, from. Yeah. Oh, that's another story. <laughs> anyway, but oh, yeah, uh, but I mean, you know, those, <laughs> that's now with the Blue Devils. <laughs> right. Exactly. But that whole you know that whole yeah. change. I mean, George was completely avant-garde and off the wall. He mm. turned every rule upside down, inside mm -hmm. out. And I, I remember I remember Mike's and Mel's reaction to it at Whitewater when all they could say is, the king's got no clothes. The king's got no clothes. And Don, Donald going, the king has clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. The king's got clothes. And they're fine linens, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, what was interesting, is, actually Stephanie's right about the 80s Blue Devil uh, legacy really was much more technical I sure. mean, because we really that's were that's who we were well it, it, yeah. mel stratton and i talked about this you know back you know it, after we'd already won a couple of championships right. and i uh, said you know this isn't that hard somebody else is going to figure, figure this out, out. Exactly. Yeah. the formula they are going to chase us down <laughs> and they're going to get us we were just more willing to work harder work longer right. you know the, right. i remember right. distinctly in 1983 uh this is just this is my last year really before I had to like take on the other hat, you know, and right. do the directing right. side of it. Right. In 1983, we're in Miami and we're practicing on this McAdam parking lot place and it's raining and it's miserable. Mm. And we've already been out there for two and a half or three hours and it starts oh, to rain. Right. right. And the kids are all starting to grumble saying, gosh, you know, it's starting to rain. 
And yeah, I Miami. looked at them all, I brought them all together, and Four I said, listen, it is not raining until I say <laughs> it's, it's raining. raining. <laughs> <laughs> we practiced for another two and a half hours. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and you're not wet right now. Yeah. In fact, you're feeling pretty right. good about yourself. Right. So, <laughs> so, I mean, we were that kind of technical We were, quality, and, right. and you know, because we had come, right. come through the ranks with that kind of attitude yeah, right, exactly. about it, right. that you do what it takes. <laughs> Until it's done. Yeah, and then plus we had Jack Meehan. I mean, he was the quintessential technician. Oh yeah, I mean, gosh. he changed the face of technique yeah. and, and brass as we know it, you mm -hmm. know. And then we had great students. Like, we also had some great students in brass, too, like Dave Carrico. Yeah, right. That came oh, through yeah. the line. And right. I, think, I, I think Jim McFarland at that point yep. in time, you know, was, was teaching. And, and they, everybody was a, a technique monster. Well, but, we, just a minute about Jack, too. Because Jack, <laughs> yeah, Jack, you know, this is the, the blessing and curse, you know. Uh, Jack was... I think between between you and Jack, the, you know, the thing that had been created within the Blue Devils that I think was really something that you have to think very specially about is the brass section. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you've had more successful brass lines than any other drum corps ever, sure. and it came directly out of you know this lineage from Jim Ott to Wayne Downey to actually Frank Doherty being right, in there, right, and then right. Jack. Right. was the guy. I mean, sure. Jack was really the guy that, that took it to that next level sure. of, yeah. uh, of, of quality mm -hmm. that create, really stole the mantle from the Madison Scouts. Right, right. And Mel and I were writing shows really with ears first. I mean, our right. first notion was, how do you make the horn line sound great? Sure. And then uh, if it looks right and we get the drum line and color right okay. in there, that's okay too. <laughs> right. exactly. Because those guys won't yell at me as much as Wayne will. <laughs> <laughs> but then the rules change. With the yeah, 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 then yeah. the rules change yeah. and we'd have, yeah. to have to have drill. Yeah. Okay, all right, go ahead. Okay, wait, I gotta go back to wait, Jack. Wait, that's all okay, okay. He's gonna all right, go because, back. because the great combination was Wayne always taught with pure hype. And we'd just get in front of the kids and he would just be on fire constantly and Jack was a Zen master. Right. Oh, yeah. It was the opposite. Jack yeah. would just get in front, everybody yeah. would calm down right. and it was a great balance. Yeah, Good. that's right. And right. it worked for all those years. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's actually, that's exactly that's right. Phenomenal so 84, point. so I get to do 84. Okay, Because Go. 84 <laughs> is the first time, this is a very, really important element in drum corps broadly, mm -hmm. is that uh, the first of the corporate drum corps directors, Jerry Seawright, mm. was really the first guy, he was the first guy to break into that club Mm -hmm. of the guys that started DCI. And now it was his last year in 1983, and mm -hmm. he, was he was to turn it over. And he turned it over to me, but <laughs> only because he looked at Wayne and said, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was the only other option, you know. So it was sort of fake crazy. I, I actually think the reason I became the director of the Corps is because I didn't have to warm up anybody at championship. Well, the I, other, the other reason. Wayne had to warm up the horn line. You guys had to warm up the drum line, the color guard. I was the only one that didn't have anything to do. But that's the other reason so. is because every time you got the Corps while he was away, everything was fine. Every time I got the Corps, <laughs> The food truck burnt down. <laughs> uh, you know, they said, oh, now, let's make Wayne the director. I don't think so. <laughs> well, they figured that if we could get him to the starting line, they must be able to get him to Wisconsin. Exactly. You know, that was sort of the notion, I think. Yeah. You introduced yeah. the, you, you got us to 84. 84. 84 so is forward. really a pivotal, uh, yeah. this is a, one of my best stories okay. that I'll never forget. It, we talked about instruments and designing of instruments. Mm. In 1984, for the first time, we had two valve bugles with... The tune every note slide. Oh gosh! <laughs> now, of course, everybody that was our competitor in '84, we were illegal. We were illegal. <laughs> now, of course, the, the thing. The, the, just remember, we were only we weren't illegal all year long until yeah. the day before prelims. <laughs> right, but it was it was in Atlanta. That, it was the whisper, right. you know. Well, whisper well, but it was like throughout the year. We'll get them in finals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and I remember you, we were in, in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and you came up to me and said, "We got a problem." And I said, uh, what? It's my first year as director. Oh, he was the first year as director. Right. We're suck. having, it's exactly, like, we have oh a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, they think our instruments are illegal. They're they going want to, to disqualify yes. us. <laughs> remember? This is the day before prelims. They want to disqualify us. No, Why? But remember, mem we were all there when that happened to, 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 Bridge, Bay, to, to Bridgman, right, in the, in the late 70s. But this was, the other thing that was, it was kind of conspira conspiracy was because cadets, had gone undefeated all year long, except for three days before we when we beat them going into championship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then all of a sudden they want to disqualify us. I just went absolutely nuts. I said, no, 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 no. That was not calm. So that no, that was not calm. So then we had a special meeting in the parking lot of the Atlanta Stadium, and there was nobody there. It was like, you know, like shoot at, at the OK Corral. Well, no one else is around. The wind is blowing. And here comes Mike and I. Uh, okay, and here's Gail Roya and Gordon Henderson, you know, it's like, you know, and oh then Don Pessioni, 
Yeah. At that, you know, and it was like because he had to mediate the thing because sure. you know, yeah. Yeah, and the also was, phantom you could play regiment. An illegal no. We, right, exactly. The a because flats. Elite, a flats the were illegal. illegal. A flats were illegal. And right. we were playing a flats, and right. it was one of the things we couldn't play any a flats, <laughs> and we had that illegal slide. Right. And so it was okay. Bring one of your soprano bugles. Okay. Right. That's All right. right. <laughs> we're going to test it. If you use because you're using these, if because we have documentation, people have seen you push those slides in. And if those slides play A flats, then you, you know they're illegal. They're, you're illegal and you disqualify. Right. And they had Gordon Hennison there to, you know, like validate our illegalness. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no, but Gordon's right. got these great well, credentials. No, Gordon was He's great the because band he, you know, director at UCLA. Sure. UCLA and great and trumpet player. So anyway, he takes the instrument and he plays it and he pushes the slide in. He says, you know, and Gail's already, you know. I can't play an A flat. Can't play a flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gordon's great. What? I've been seeing those put those slides in. I, I can hear them click. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Gala, you guys were only halfway through the decade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. And I don't know, does everybody remember? Really what started to happen is the system started to change. Right. Mm. The staff started to change, because remember now in 1985, what did the Blue Devils do? We did, for the first time the ever, symphonic music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the Emerson Eel, Lake, Eel, 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 Palmer, right. and, and yeah. then we, and it was kind of the new wave, Pat Metheny with First Circle. That was really things cool. completely, completely different because we were trying to create now a through thought mm -hmm. that had personality and character that was a little different from what the cadets did. <laughs> Finishing the show with Pat Metheny, which is one of my favorite tunes to right. choreograph to, in a signature of 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. It was really difficult. She remembers how to teach wow. it. Wow, you remember how long it was. It was difficult to teach it. Remember that show? That was a rush. Great one to remember. My favorite year was probably '86. I think it was '86. Yeah. Because we played the music that I played when I was in the <laughs> Yeah, right. One thing I remember about 86 was that the core was just, and maybe it was the alignment of the planets or whatever, was just <laughs> as dominant as the as 76 core. It had that same oh, yeah. persona yeah. of absolutely like not forget it. No. Yeah. You know, and they walked yeah. on the field and they, they captivated the audience and it, it, was, it was really, really, really strong and it, it, it was just really amazing that it was. And I, what I remember about it too is the first time that I remember us talking about alumni. Because you know, by 86, we had, you know, what, 13, 12 years of alumni since I started teaching, 13 right, years right. of alumni. Right. But it was the first time that they had the alumni come to the Concord show, and they had oh, alumni was... softball game, alumni <laughs> barbecue. We had a great party. Okay, a yeah. great yeah. party. It was the first time everybody started yeah, to come back. And what happened was a lot of the alumni from 76 came back because it was Channel One Suite, it was the anniversary yep. of the first championship, right. and I remember the energy of the kids in the 86 core well, just being at the Concord show. At the Concord it, it seemed show like the whole 76 core was on the track, too. Right. right. Oh, <laughs> the were. track was full they of people. Were. Right. Everybody was, <laughs> was right amazing. there, exactly. in your you know. face. No one, everyone was in the stands, but the core was like on the track, so it was just this instant feedback, and yeah. uh, right. they were going crazy out on the field. And then yeah. the, the other thing I remember about this, as we move further into the years, I remember the 80, I don't remember. I remember. <laughs> we get off track on 87. For some reason, well, we started I, to get into this. Oh, uh, that, was a, that was the toughest year. That oh was my gosh, the reason why, because we so did hard. so well with 86 doing yeah, old music. Was, yeah. And the kids left. There was a, it was a right. lot of big age out year. Right. And then yeah. in 87, yep. somebody said, oh, but you know, in 85, we did some symphonic things. So maybe we should start to broaden ourselves. So we remember what the opener was? Fanfare it was the fanfare, fanfare, fanfare for the, for the news. Awesome. Right, exactly. Do you remember the staff <laughs> meeting <laughs> at your house in Benicia? I don't remember. Your mind. No, me and Tom were at the staff meeting, and we were the some of the other staff members that said, no, we don't want to play this. It's not, uh, right. we didn't want to do it. Right. 
you guys said, okay, we're playing it. <laughs> yeah. So we leave <laughs> yeah, to the point, yeah, yeah, to the yeah, point yeah, where we, we get over Ray, the bridge going It home. was his fault. Tom turned around. I never wanted to play Tom turned either. around and goes, we got to go back. <laughs> we went back to the house, knocked on the door, walked in. Guys, please. Yeah, I remember <laughs> this. Oh, I know that's true. Oh, yeah. But you know, but the following year, 1988. Well, that was, uh, uh, that's, the, right. of the 80s, that was one of my favorite years. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, 80, 82, 84, uh, 86, 86, 88. Every e uh, remember the even odd oh, epidemic. Is that, oh, yeah, right. oh, was that okay. every time we didn't have to travel in the south? Yeah. We, an even we only year. traveled when exactly. our tour went north. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every time we had to travel in the south, it was like I don't know. Right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Was that, in ninety it was also. Two, four, right. six, exactly. eight. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Every every, every other even year. year you know, and the, just think yeah. of the 80 show yeah. was the culmination of the 70s. Yeah. 82 was the first beginning of the new, you know, the new Blue Devils, year. okay? Right. Right. 84 was fabulous. 86 was fabulous. 88, with the exception of the last day of the season. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, so like, you know, every oh day gosh, except and, the last day right, was okay. And another yeah. change, another uniform change for the color guard into right. the white. Another uniform, well, that was a uniform right. change for everybody. everybody. That's yeah. right. We took the core out of blue for only time that that ever happened uh -huh. and uh and i was sort of staying all by myself on this one uh but we changed right. color guard staff we changed we changed a bunch of stuff what else did Dave, that was also another uh, musical Dave big started change. designing with this other guy that showed up pete emmons showed up in 1988 mm -hmm. uh for the first time mm -hmm. and uh you know I, I remember dave arguing me almost as much about pete as he did about hiring jay and stuff <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm not sure that that's true because Dave's done a whole lot better than I did after that. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, Pete showed up for the first time and, uh, you know, has really been an incredible part of the organization ever since. <laughs> I fell for you was the, the finale. Yeah, right. And we had the, the horn line and the color guard dance together yeah. in the finale. Fake ending year. The fake well, we started with our base beat walking yeah. out the field and then turned oh, around right, for that last time. Turn around <laughs> and <backed> out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That was undefeated until the last show. Right. Yeah, undefeated exactly. until the last show. That was the another a great creative year. It was also another great drum corps. Absolutely. Of, of members. Mm -hmm. the, the Blue Devils, while you know, we sort of got the genesis out of the uh, out of the Kingsman idea, you know, from mm -hmm. the 70s, mm -hmm. that really what we had become is we had become the new East Coast Drum Corps. Right. You know, because the East Coast was for looking sure. for somebody to love, you know, and that right. was part of, I think, the Bayonne <laughs> thing. You know? Because they were, yeah. 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 Was, like, was that reaction? They, you know, they, they wanted, wanted a, a drum rush. Corps. Yeah, they really wanted you, that. You know, what I really wow. remember from the 80s is every time we'd go to Boston, Mm -hmm. You know, the people mm -hmm. from Boston, there was, there was, a, there was a Blue connection. Devil cadre of yeah. fans yeah. Yeah. in Boston that, yeah. that just that looked forward to... After 1980. After, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's when 27th was... Yeah, yeah. 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 it was after 27th, right. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Actually, it was during 27th because the Boston Crusaders still liked us better than... The Boston Crusaders, right, exactly. It was 50-50 yeah. in the city of Boston. It was yeah. 27th and the Crusaders. The that's Crusaders true. are going, no, 27th. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So that was what we represented. And then we got to 89. It was an odd year. Oh, yeah. there you go, 89, not very, very good. Year. I have no recollection of 89. I know. The one thing that was great about 89 is it really motivated the staff as we transitioned into 90. You're right. Because right. we had other new faces. Yep. Right. Come, come to us. It was Scott, Scott Chandler. Scott Chandler Scott, shows Scott up. Scott Chandler first, shows you know. up. I exit. Dave Glide shows up. You know, yeah. and uh, it really, it really, really, 89 was such, such not an, an ex wonderful experience yeah. that I think everybody said, wa we got to 90 and everybody just washed their hands and said, let's do this different. Right. Let's do this new. Start over. Let's make this something new and different. And when they did the Tommy show. And we did the Tommy show. Right. <laughs> The 
80s were for the Drumker activity was really pivotal. And demographically, the United States had changed dramatically. This is the, the crest of the baby boom generation, mm -hmm. and the population mm -hmm. of kids available to participate in drum corps declined dramatically, mm -hmm. as did drum corps. So drum corps was going through lots of changes on a, on a macro level uh, mm -hmm. at, the, at the board of directors level and many other things. The old guard had shifted, uh, mm -hmm. and all of these new guys had come on. George Hopkins had right. come on. Uh, uh, Gail Royer had left the vanguard. You right. know, during this period of time. Year, yeah. So there, there was some really sea changes that had happened from the, from the point of view of the, the, the sort of the macro level of drum corps. And it took us all the way through the 80s, really, to kind of absorb some of that. The first big corporate drum corps shows up with the Star of Indiana, and everybody's wondering mm, how sure. we're going to fund it, how, you know, what's, what's going to happen with all of this stuff. So the 80s, I think, for drum corps broadly was, uh, was a lot of change that was going on. And the Blue Devils, Went through well. that with it. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, we yeah. really went through that. Uh, you know, Jerry gives up the directorship uh, at the end of 1983, and I take over in '84. I give up the directorship in 1990, mm -hmm. and Dave Gibbs takes over, who was the drum major in 1980. 1980. Right. <laughs> right. The drum major in 1980 right. becomes the director of the Blue right. Devils. Well, I mean, it was a real shift. You yes. know. Yeah. Okay, so here's a, a down memory lane. 1980, Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> okay. <Sorry>. Okay. <laughs> Wow, this is an old, the, you're going to remember this. <laughs> okay. uh, you're going to, you're going to just like, <laughs> bing. The field was this horrible field. It had wooden posts with lights on it. It was dimly lit. The GE box was the motor home. All right. And about 8.30 or 9 o'clock, the police show up because it's past curfew. And Jerry Seawright goes walking out, you know, to speak with the, with the, uh, with the police. And they said, you know, you're past curfew. I'm going to come back in a half an hour. And if this is still up and running, I'm going to arrest you. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name's George Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> so the policeman gets in his car, OK, and, and drives away. And, and Jerry comes up to me. He says, listen, we got to stop rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, no problem. We'll yeah, stop we're rehearsal. Because you don't understand. The police are going to. And I said, and I said, hey, I said well, what, what did he say? He said, well, he asked me what my name was. And I said, well, what did you say? He said, I told them I was George Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, he goes, so, so we have to stop. Are they going to, you know, I said, okay, all right. Well, you know, we'll, we'll, we're fine. We'll, we'll stop. Okay, of course. Well, then I turned around and went back to rehearsal. A half an hour later, the sirens, the lights, okay. Jerry finds. <laughs> the nearest garbage bin, one of those large dumpsters, dumpsters opens up the top, climbs in, and closes it up. <laughs> and, no, and, I'm, Jerry yeah, do that. <laughs> and I'm saying, Jerry, we go, oh, okay. tell him George Kelly's not here. <laughs> <laughs> We got the run through in too. We got the run through. We got the run through. We got the run through. I remember that. And we got what to was do the run through. And, I, and when I said to Stephanie, that was really funny is, you know, George Kelly, was driving, he so was, he was there. Yeah, so yeah. you say, George, I'm George Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> that never did happen, so. so for us, you know, the 1980 drum corps uh, really embodied the spirit of championship, because every year, whether we were good, bad, or indifferent, every kid in those drum corps believed by the we time they got win. the championship, we were gonna win. Yeah. Uh, they were self-convinced and ready to win any championship, any year, every time. And we were always disappointed if we didn't win. There was no place for the Blue Devils except for first place. That, that was how we thought about ourselves. Right. And it connected the 70s championship experiences uh, into the 90s and I think beyond because of that kind of attitude that the staff had and permeated through the kids. You know, we all felt like family. And I think that's what made it work. There is a final sentence, and that is, that sense of love, caring, and sharing mm -hmm. really began the day that Jerry Seawright hired all of us. Absolutely. Because he is the reason there was family, He's sharing, amazing. caring, and that was the end of the 80s, which was a continuation of the 70s, which is continuing right now until 2000.